Um, so what are your guilty <laughs> pleasures? And I said Backstreet Boys and M&M's. <laughs> One of those people that back in the day when I was a booze hag. Yeah. Oh. Hello everybody and welcome to today's show. We're so excited. Unscripted, real talk, real life. With myself, Sarah. Of course, me, Sarah. My beautiful Victoria. And the other beautiful Renata. I just love the way I serve you guys up on a plate. Yeah. Hello. Ready for the big <laughs> serve. <laughs> we are really, really excited today. We have a very special guest. And we're, yeah, we are. Well, shall I just say again? We're really excited. So we have the beautiful Franco Hickey joining us today. Thank you so much for coming on our show today. We are completely humbled and so grateful that you would take time out of your day to share today with us. Such a pleasure to be here. Thank you for asking. Mm, you're yeah. so welcome. It's amazing. It's Thank amazing. <laughs> There's some old, some old friends here and a new friends and just feels really nice. Yeah. It is. It yeah. is. It is. We're very happy. So I thought you had a very, very busy month. Yeah. You've just finished a very huge, amazing event. Mm. Want to tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm really passionate these days about um, health health across the board, whether it be holistic health. Um, well, it's all holistic health, really. Um, but coming from a pretty dark past of not looking after myself, I now run um, big, big health and wellness festivals. So NZ Spirit Festival was last week, and we thankfully got it done. We got it done. It was a four-day camping festival where there's 150 workshops. You can sort of float between different workshops that may call you. Uh, yoga, meditation, dance, um, oh, all these things, and amazing food. Um, it's all a family uh, occasion, no alcohol and drugs or anything. And we did it, and it was a postponed date too, so it's been a hell of a, of like oh, a journey. Right. Yeah, we got postponed um, two months out. Um, we, we're, the, we're normally the week after the Splore Festival. Splore got rolled, and then we got rolled the next weekend, and it was wow. just like we had to create a new festival in two months, which wow. scheduling yeah. nightmare, you know. As I say, how 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 did that affect you? Was it simply just move everything, or was it like a? Uh, uh, it's sort of, it's sort of like it sort of absolutely killed me to be honest, because yeah. my body gets really ready for a festival. Like it has to just do the superhuman thing. We were like holding space for thousands of people. Um, and so my body knows what's coming and what it needs to do. And so um, old Cindy uh, called um, uh, a lockdown the day that we were setting up the oh, festival. Oh shit! And so you started I was to just, set up already. It was, yeah, we got wow. the we got the first teepee up and some glamping tents, and so we were in it, really, really in it. And then suddenly lockdown. So it's the opposite of a, of a gathering. Lockdown is just like as we know, it's just like isolation and I'm living in my house bus at the moment building a house bus out of an oh old my God, school are you? yeah it's like the dream oh it's the oh dream um, but it's a pretty small space to go from thinking you're you're going to be holding space for thousands of people yeah. into lockdown for a week or two by myself in a bus like yeah. dealing with the admin and the you know when there's a lockdown there's you, you just really see especially um, um, when you're running an event like this the back end of people's emotional disturbances mm -hmm. you know so like can I get a refund and da 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 and it's like ah oh, it's your fault and da da da, da. and it's like whoa um, that was not what I was expecting my week to be wow, yeah. so it kind of it, it grew my capacity to a place that it had never been before and it felt like I was dying um, oh no um, <laughs> like just an old part of me was dying I think this this you know because um, I, I just had to step up and mm -hmm. deal with a lot that I've that I wouldn't have sure. probably chosen to deal with my capacity grew, and then when the pressure sort of came down and things started getting put into place, um, the capacity was still massive, and there was no stress, so I just felt amazing. So I felt like I was flying on this whole new level. It's like running, it's like being at the gym, carrying weights or whatever, running around, and then you drop the weights, and you just keep running around. It feels like you've never been lighter. That's that's the, the silver lining from, from that experience. So it's been a big month. Or three. Yeah. But it has for everyone. So just big compassion to everyone going through their individual disruptions, yeah. you know, and, and, and like everyone's yeah. birthing themselves right now, yeah. it seems. And it's wow. quite an incredible place to be. I mean, you know, I was saying I, I'm the first time I met you was the 
when just the Spirit Fest that you did just before COVID. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think you said it was like the first case came out during Spirit Fest, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. And, not um, at Spirit Fest, but during it. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, not at. <laughs> yeah, let's clarify. Uh, um, yeah, and, and for, for me, it was one of the most um, amazing experience I have ever actually had. And it came at a time that it was just so needed. I was going through... Um, a really difficult time and I felt like my world was sort of crumbling around me and then I found myself um, at this festival where I'm not very good at being vulnerable and all of a sudden I was surrounded by I, I can't even I couldn't begin to describe what this energy is at this festival it is like you're in this sort of high there's no drugs no alcohol nothing like that but you're in this sort of high and this really clear space with mm. so many people around you that are non-judgmental at all and are there not because oh you're another human going through something empathy they really it's it, genuinely it's care. very genuinely care and mm. you know i actually had a few um massive breakthroughs at, at spirit fest um mm. and i remember one of the times as well just just breaking down and it was just for the first time allowing that emotion to just go through me and go through my body and my body respond to it and let it through and and come out the other side in such a beautiful atmosphere and i have to say it was one of the best experiences yeah it was i'm really so special. coming to the next one do you do them yearly are they yearly or are they <laughs> i'm welling up with that story it's really beautiful to hear that yeah. oh i love every it. year yeah so once a year no a few times a year so we run oh. um um, well, my, my partner at the time and the co-founder of, of these events, uh, Nikki, we we took our daughters. We had five daughters together, so she's got three. I've got two, so it was like a a lot, a lot of women around. Yeah. And um, and we couldn't find a New Year's event either that was 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 sort of safe enough and inspiring enough for ourselves and our kids and everything as well. So we just decided to create a New Year's event too, called Resolution New Year's Eve Festival. Um, so we run both two big summer events as well as a one day event called NZ Yoga Day which is at Western Springs it's like a oh $20, $20 for the price of like a, a yoga class you can come try out different forms of yoga for the week uh, for the for the day and food trucks and marketplace and stuff Amazing. it's like a oh, I love the sound an easy of little step in yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're non-stop. Oh my gosh! Because I, I really, I really care about looking after people every day, and in winter especially, we're about to come into winter now, and mm. it gets hard for people. I've struggled with depression and suicidal um, tendencies and anxiety and just all that stuff um, as well. And, and and winter seems to be quite a dark time where if you're not careful, you can go down a rabbit hole, and it's cold, it's dark, it's it's yeah. disconnected you hide anyway. away and yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. people don't tend to yeah. go out and socialize much in the winter, anyways, do they? Right. Yeah. 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 Although they yeah. should. There's no reason that they yeah. shouldn't. Just need you know? a fire. Yeah, yeah. they just need, just need somewhere to go. Ooh. Yeah. Fire or a snuggle. Like, you know? Oh, or snuggle. Both. Snuggle. Yeah, snuggle. more snuggles, snuggles for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that lack <laughs> of human connection. The answer, surely. You know. Um. Yeah. So, so community is something that. I've been really craving, and I think the like we 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 live in Auckland, all of us, right? The oh. most popular uh, populated city in the country, yeah. yet it doesn't feel very connected mm -hmm. at all. So there's this yeah, like disconnect of like I'm surrounded by the most people in the country, but I feel by myself, like, yeah. and that's confusing for the body. Um, so it's not really community. Um, so you, you, the feeling that you felt was like a deep sense of presence. Oh. deeply seen deeply heard you're probably you're able to hear others clearly as well just that absolutely and then it was yeah like and that's that's exactly it it was that sort of clarity and it was you know some real sort of breakthrough feelings for me um it, it, through attending was it, through different sort of workshops and events and, and people that are just so so you, you feel so comfortable in their presence and you can open up to them and they hear you, they mm. are listening mm. and they, they see you mm. and they hear you mm. and With they're no not judgment. judging you. And mm. it was quite funny <clears throat> to sort of get to the root of some of my pain, which I had just, you know, when, when things affect you, you go compartmentalize, you've got to get on, you've got to be strong, you've got a family, you've got to keep going, yeah. I'm not feeling this, I can't break down. And you go, go, no go, 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 go. Yeah, no time, no, no time. time. There's no, no time, time to feel. Shit. No time yeah. to... 
you know, sit and still and, you know, be and feel and process, you know, it's always like, shit, we're always on a, you yeah. know, like a time frame to do stuff. To connect with yourself, let alone yeah. other people. It's just mm-hmm. like, you know, we drop the kids off at school to go to this job that we hate to buy um, <laughs> our house that is like a big noose around our neck, a mortgage mm-hmm. and all this disconnect, you know, we don't have time for any of the stuff that really matters, it seems. Yeah. So yeah, these festivals are kind of, for me, a, a window into oh. how we can live uh, more present, more connected, um, and a bit more minimal too. That we just don't need as much stuff to be happy. Mm-hmm. Stuff is heavy. <clears throat> so yeah, I'd like to ask what? Why did you want to have something that was alcohol and drug free? Like, what was your yeah. motivation? Is it something that you've come from in your day of you know having addiction, and then you wanted yeah. to have you know something that wasn't mm. for? Because there was a lot of people who were going through sobriety. I myself am one. I've been a year, nearly a year and a half sober. So fuck yes. yes. Like, so stoked. So your thing. How do you feel? Like, what is what is that for you? What is how do you? God, I'm like, I mean, like, amazing. I mean, myself a year and a half ago was just. Hideous. Like it was actually really hideous. It was a horrible, the darkest I have ever, ever been, hence why I stopped. And I thank yeah. God for Monroe because she's the reason why I did finally stop, yeah. you know, stop the cycle that I was in. So it's been a process, like the year, like really finding myself, yeah. still feeling quite uncomfortable in my skin because yeah. you don't have that alcohol to make you Literally. feel comfortable and have conversations with people. So I still find that I get qu- quite a bit of anxiety, but fuck, nothing like. Mm. My life is a complete 180 of what it Bigger was. Bigger payoff, eh? Oh, like, huge, huge payoff. Mm. The clarity, the holy shit, I actually can sleep for, you know, seven to eight hours. Um, nice. And it can actually function and work the day. And I have zero cravings. We'll never drink alcohol again. I have no desire or passion to. So mm. your, you know, your thing with your spirit fest is something that I would be, ve- and, mm. and to take, be able to take your, ch- your children to. Yeah, that's yeah, safe. That exactly. doesn't have drunk people around. Yeah. Yeah. Go, uh, or falling all over you or groping your ass or your titties or something you know what yeah, I mean it's, yeah. it's just a nice environment with beautiful you know energy and mm. you know so uh, yeah what was your what was your yeah. what was your transition from going from when did this all happen yeah I mean uh, uh, yeah with alcohol my relationship personally with alcohol has been one that I, when I reflected a few years ago I was like I don't think anything good has ever come from alcohol and me like d- joining together like not nothing great you know all the great stuff in my life has come from like some hard work, being present, being focused and loving, caring, kind, whatever. It's not been from alcohol and like mm-hmm. shitty drugs, you know. Um, so, you know, I had an alcohol, uh, alcoholic father as well. So I observed him and his pitfalls and I sort of asked the same question about him. Like, mm-hmm. what's good coming from that? Well, he probably lost a lot of of his relationships and, 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 and wealth. He used to be really wealthy in the, in the 80s and stuff. And that was probably from the downfall of, of alcoholism. And um, so it just, it just didn't make sense. And I just thought, wow, we're so, we're so one-sided in this, in this country, I think all over the world, um, with there's an event, it's going to be obviously alcohol is going to be the there. It's the, it? reven- yeah. it's the revenue. It's the revenue. It's where the money's made. It's like it's that social lubricant. So it panders to that anxi- that anxious side of ourselves. Yeah. It's like, well, no one's doing anything. No one's filling the other void. No one's giving the kids coming through an option. Mm-hmm. If I knew, if I knew as a teenager that there was just an option, uh, it would just do wonders for me. Like, mm-hmm. but there wasn't an option. It was just like you play you play rugby. You you drink after the rugby game, and then you drink more after the. So it was, yeah, a, yeah. it was normal to yeah. sort of so, so follow normal. that culture. culture here, isn't it? Yeah. And then instinctively my body was just, I knew it was getting poisoned, you know. When yeah. you got to the stage where you were like, okay, um, you know, changes started happening, happening in your life, your mentality, your passions, mm. um, and where your interests lay, when that sort of journey started and, you know, people around you close to you, like your family and friends could start seeing and witnessing you evolving in that way. How? What was their responses to you? What was? What did they think of? Yeah. They fucked. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's not an asshole anymore. No. Yeah. I mean, you know, there, there was. Um, there's always when you disrupt the when you just when you change. Like, there's always there's always two sides of the coin. There's the, mm. there's the non-believers, which were pretty loud because I was pretty loudly like part loud partier loud musician rock star baby loud, just like you know the rock without the star which is always a little bit like <laughs> yeah um 
you know, and and then there's the the naysayers, which is which is fine because when I when you're done, you're done. Like you you were done a year and a half ago, and it's just like you just know that I'm at rock bottom or something. So I knew what I was sort of doing, and, and as far as like what I was, no, I, I knew what I wasn't doing anymore, and it was just alcohol. I'm just open to anything but that. Um, and then you know, you just because you you're sober and you're moving through life and in, in, in a in a present way, in a natural way kindness always comes to the surface like love comes to the surface care for yourself and other people comes to the surface so those are the people that start coming more and more into my life and um you know I, the, the big transition for me was like finishing a bottle of vodka and then having what's called vipassana the next day which is a, a 10 day silent course where you can rock up uh, out in kokopa copper uh, and you're not allowed to speak for for ten days. You can't oh, you can't eyeball anyone. You what? Can't, you can't look at anyone. You can't read a book. You can't write. You can't do anything apart from do the vipassana meditation. Oh, I'd be for like ten myself. hours. So, what the yeah. fuck? Yeah. I'm just talking about ten days. Ten days. Ten hours a day. Like, what? Ten hours a day. Yeah. Wow. So you're doing like three sets of two hour meditations, a couple of sets of one hour meditations, and and so that was my big like reach for the for the life for the lifesaver type thing. And yeah. and I decided to do that because I observed my mum and dad meditating as a kid. So it wasn't as scary and as not normal as, as, it, as meditation might have been for other people. I got to see my dad and my mum sort of sit with their eyes closed in the lounge. Um, you know, admittedly at the time, I would like watch them with their eyes closed and then go play the fool and like, you know, probably steal <laughs> something. Or, um, but at least it was it was in my peripheral, you know, and, and so I knew that that could be an option to heal myself. So I just went straight in and I always go deep and fast and that big. That would have been yeah. deep as so well. Went, yeah, 10 days. I went from 40 deep. ounce to 10 days. So you just went like that. It was, yeah. a, it was a switch that flicked with, with you as well. Well, you kind of have to, I think, when you're ready, you've got to dive straight in there. Otherwise, you some have people wean off or some people to <laughs> stone cold. Yeah, yeah. Stone Holy cold. shit. I went to yeah. stone cold. You obviously went stone I cold. See, I see similar in each other. Like, we're just like, yeah, full or nothing. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, yeah. I, and But I think other people... Some do people find it, don't find it as easy to just go cold turkey and mm. they need sort of... I couldn't easy. wean myself yes. off. That was my thing. Famous cigarettes because I gave up cigarettes on the same day. So yeah. it was cigarettes and, and yeah. alcohol. How many years... Do you still drink now? That like, was, a, do, Are you just a uh, social I drinker? Would, like I, month, I probably had like two, three, three drinks in a year. You know, I would never... I would never... Yeah, I'm, I'm, th that's interesting as well. Like the relationship for me, I'm not anti... I don't think I'm anti anything. It's just like I'm anti just... For me, abuse, like like mm -hmm. overdoing stuff, you know, just yeah. getting yeah. out of balance, out of whack. We do have that massive culture here, though, don't we? I, I mean, I feel that push you, oh, here, have more, here, have more, oh, you pussy, or, oh, you know. So I, am, I might be actually be yeah. one of those people that back in the day when I was a booze hag, yeah. might have been a slight peer pressure to my friends as well, you know, oh, sure. like all my family. Like, I mean, my sister gave up drinking. Oh, I was sure, I mean, we used to call her... <laughs> We used to call her Safi, Saffron from Ab Fab, like the boring yeah. geek fucking thing. And um and she <laughs> Yeah, I might have peer pressured someone back in my day. Like, my sister, thing. my sister. And like and I remember she said to us, it was it wasn't actually that long ago, she goes, That really offended me. I was really offended mm. that you me and mum would be my me and mum were like, bah, bah, fucking, you know, bottles of Bolly Darling smoking away. And she's then we're like, Saffy! You know? Yeah. And then, you know, I obviously had to apologise and go, I, you know, now that I'm sober, I was realised. Yeah, things come up. There was some really ugly shit that yeah. I did and said and, you know, treated people, people that I loved, because I wanted to feel good about what I was doing, even though I hated myself and what I was doing. Like, it was, you know. But, yeah, there's a big journey. You know. There's a big journey, isn't there? Like, when you get, when you get, sort of get sober, of of like cleaning up your past and that's that's confronting as hell oh, oh yeah yeah it's, it's nice. facing all the things that you feel that you might have done wrong and people you might have hurt and oh, you might yeah. just say sorry yeah. to yeah. whoopsies yeah. my yeah. bad yeah. yeah i think I, my 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 thing is like however long you're being you're doing in that phase for it's probably going to take the same amount of time into mm. the future to that's 25 years babe so that's 25 years under yeah, my i know belt. i know I've got, i started I think, little i started young me too me, me too yeah well, how long how old were you when you started sort of i was really 12 when i started it? blacking out Holy Whoa. shit. Like blackout junk, 12, 13. Oh, no. That's I scary. I know. 12. 12. And, I, and, I, and I absolutely remember 12, 13, 
14, 15, just a lot of blacking out. A lot of just some fucking dumb shit, sneaking out of the house, blacking out at parties. Yeah. You know, putting myself in some stupid... Were you, were you like in a group of older friends or were they all the same age? And uh, kind of same shit? age. Yeah. I had a few troublemaker friends and we would just sneak out and, you know, just be idiots really. And just, we'll just walk into strangers' houses who are having parties. We'll roam the street. Yeah. You fucking what? have to My daughter is going to have bolts on everything in the house, including locking her in the room and she can't escape from the window because it's not happening. Yeah. That's you what I mean, becoming a mother, doesn't it just, when you look back on your life mm. and then you become a parent, oh. yeah. you become a parent, you think, oh Now you see gosh. what your parents were doing and what yeah. you put them through. Yeah. Like, I'm quite glad my mum doesn't remember a lot. She's like, you're an angel, you're an amazing <laughs> child. I was like, I was a bitch. I got expelled from four schools. Mm. I wagged, I smoked drugs, I drank like a sailor. I ran away from home. And your mum doesn't remember and my mom, that? No. No, I, which I reckon, is great. I reckon, like, because it doesn't, none of that <laughs> stuff makes you a bad person, though. You're not no, a, you, like, behavior. that's the thing. And your mum sees that, that you know, you're a great person. She doesn't see wow. that stuff. I mean, a lot of, a lot of what you've talked about, like, with schools and stuff, is so unnatural to do, anyways. It's like half of it's crazy to actually be a part of. So, you know, I got expelled for t from two schools as well. So I was, I, I was just listening <laughs> to myself going, this isn't for me. And it wasn't for me. And you've got two daughters? Yeah. So I've got a four-year-old and a 10-year-old. Yeah. Aww. Yeah. So they're wow. rocking. Yeah. So, so what are they like? What are, what are their personalities you, like? Are they like you? you, you so uh, oh, yeah. They're bigger, bigger personalities than me. Like they just, they're a little woman that are running the game, um, sizing me up, <laughs> making sure that I'm on time, doing what I say I'm going to do. Like... Yeah, it's the best. And Holding you accountable for everything. Eh? Make you yeah. accountable for everything. So, so blessed. I mean, we're all parents here, right? And there are little reflective mechanisms. And um, if you're, and that ultimately they want you to be really okay with yourself and, and make good choices for yourself. And that resonates, that has a feeling. And, and they, they can, I notice when I'm doing, you know, looking after myself, there's a calm in the room with, with everybody, but with the girls, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and then you can respond to them instead of snapping at them because you're just like tired or yeah, made a shitty decision earlier in the day. They really you know? respond. <laughs> happy energy, parents, they? happy kids. They so. do. Yeah. They, can, they can feel yeah. your energy. They pick yeah. up on your energy. Good, and they yeah. also pick up on energy between people as well. Um, yeah, they, mm. the, the We've spoken definitely. about that. Yeah. They're our gurus. Like kids are our, are our gurus, man. Like, cause yeah. that, they still the, have the that innocence, eh? Innocence. They though. feel like we haven't taught them to, um, mm. like they haven't got that influence to tell them that feeling that they have is not okay. Not been yeah. programmed yeah. yet. Not programmed. Yeah. They're closer to the divine or, yeah. you know, the creator. You know, it's just, and we should listen to them more. We should, you should have them on the show, to be honest. Yeah, should, oh, we, you do, know what? should we do a children panel? What? Yeah. That'd be hilarious. That's a silly idea because they are so smart and they are really so intelligent. Smart. And as I said, when we were talking about a mum's po post, yeah. um, pod, is that a lot of adults don't, I think take that time to realise that the children are individuals and they are individual human beings. <gasps> so cute. And they are so freaking onto oh, it and man. so smart and so intelligent. Yeah. And I, I, I wish that they were given Empower. a little bit more. We yeah. don't give Empower. them credit they deserve, no. actually. No. Yeah. yeah, because we think we know best because we're older. Oh, and we've lived yeah. more, but we don't. They have yeah. that, yeah, they definitely have more knowledge than oh, us sometimes. Oh, we can learn so much from them. And, and mm. that's why I, I really love our festivals because there's hundreds of kids there. They roam free for four days. And My kids will love that. Oh, they, so just, well. they just love it, and and they're having a whole experience that we know nothing about, you know, which is really really beautiful. They they, they and you know and when they have a platform to be able to be heard from at any age, then they're not going to be desperate as an adult and try and and, and try and get that yeah. limelight in a in a kind of um, unhealthy way if, mm. and all we need to do is listen to them i have to say for my, for mm. my kids i took my children one of the days to spirit fest mm. as well when i was there and my girls are normally quite reserved and, and shy in big crowds and things when you get to know them their oh, confidence my. comes out <laughs> but you know um like we went to a show recently and all the kids went on stage there was no way my kids were leaving those seats like there's no way they'd get up in front of people we went to spirit fest and how engaged they were mm with everything there was like, wow, they were mm. meditating. Oh, they were up dancing that. with us, like properly dancing and, you know, all the music's going and they were just copying with everyone else. They weren't worried. 
they don't look over mm. shoulders who's watching me they, they felt the energy yeah. that was there as well and to see them interact how they did was so beautiful so yeah, special to cool. see especially because they're normally so reserved yeah. you know it was like a place where they could just be themselves and let loose and that was really cool I'm gutted on this one I'm definitely going to aim for the next one yeah well, I mean yeah. I think I mean, we all yeah. end up there when the time's right for us as well, mm. you know? Exactly. Mm. What's for us doesn't go past us, mm. you know? Um, and but my vision for where the festivals, because I said before that for me these festivals are a, a window into how we can live every day and, and where I want NZ Spirit and the events to head is that everyday experience where, um, well, I'm looking at a piece of property at the moment, a big farm to be able to um, build like a tiny house, eco sustainable village I fucking and, love it. and then open the doors a couple of times a year to the big festivals but we're building the infrastructure we're building the community all year round and you can come and live you can come to a retreat like whatever and then and then the energy is just like like building and building and building um and you know sharing sharing the wisdom as well like using social social media to share the the trials and tribulations of mm. what it you know living like that um, oh, entails, um, you know, this is how we do our solar, pa- the solar energy, this is how we grow our food, um, and this is how we prepare for the big events and, and all that. So holding people all year round, we can live every day in that environment that you talk about at Spirit Festival. It doesn't have to be a holiday. God, imagine you know? that every day. Shit. Back to the basics. Yeah. You'd be working on a fucking cloud all your yeah, life, wouldn't it? Like the cloud of love and, oh, I yeah. love it. Well, people, I think, um, with that lifestyle, I think a lot of us now have become so, like, going back to that sort of being programmed in that sense, we get so used to uh, luxuries and comforts and that mm. needing more, needing more, needing more yeah. to be happy and that Never stuff enough. that we get. Mm. And it then becomes intimidating to people <clears throat> to strip that back and they no longer yeah. know how to go from here to there. Yeah. So I think having sort of an environment which educates to, re- you know, and that's the thing. It's like if, you're not, if you don't know, you don't know something till you're taught, you know, if you don't know how, you don't know how until yeah. you're taught and then you've got the tools to do it. So having environments like that where it, it really breaks things down, lets people experience it and it's so beautiful and also give them the tools and the knowledge on how to, you know, mm. make changes to their lives to benefit themselves is really special too. Yeah, I think okay. a lot of people have a lot of things that's just for security, you know, yeah. and it's, they forget who they are. And I think, yeah, things that makes them feel good. But, you know, if they strip that back and just mm. really get in touch, you know, with who they are again, they don't need any of that stuff. The distractions, the just, distractions yeah, are it's everywhere. Too much, yeah. You know? Oh, there is. Well, it's in your face all the time, yeah. you know, it's like just pounded into your face. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's trying to get a piece of you. And, and I think as well, like, I don't believe that anyone's really broken or needs healing. Everyone just needs to sort of strip away which, all the things that aren't them. And what will emerge is your perfect, bubbly, healthy self from that. Yeah. Well, I think what we're experiencing experiencing right now is just a heaviness from all the stuff and all Not the pressure. all the stuff that we're, that we're, that, is, that is pulling at us. Mm. If we if we strip that away, I think we're just going to be there, and we're going to be really happy with that. What that looks like. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of emphasis around healers at the moment, and healing yourself, and heal this and heal that. I don't think anyone's broken to begin with. Most people, I think, are just already already are there. Um, minus, we just need to take away that what's not them, and it might that might not be. It might look like uh, this relationship isn't me. This this place I'm living in isn't me. The the these M and M's aren't me, but they are. <laughs> <laughs> we got this yeah. picture for Franco. <laughs> Yum. They were like, um, so what are your guilty p- pleasures? And I said, Backstreet Boys <laughs> and M&M's. And, um, yeah, I'm and sure they, and they, sorry, Backstreet Boys. Yeah, we'll sorry. get them next time. They, they were Backstreet busy this boys. week. Yeah. Yeah. Backstreet Boys were busy this week. You're going to have to me back. <laughs> but we should get a pretend cover band. Backstreet Boys are <laughs> um, So when, I want to know, when, when, when did you get into music? Were you a music like from your childhood, was it through mm. your parents or did you just mm. find music and you went into, you've got your own albums and rock, yeah. rock music and like you're jamming, you're amazing. I've seen you live quite a few times and you're Thank freaking you. like yeah. amazing. Thank you. And you, you know, you, you know, the crowd really, you know, is attracted to you and drawn to you and you know, it's mm. a really good vibe and you've always had a really good vibe and you know, so yeah, how did, it, how did this... Mm, yeah, my parent, my parents um, were definitely are definitely great um, lovers of music and real, real various, different, diverse types of music. My mum's a 
a, a classical trained piano player. Wow. My dad it was like the guy with the guitar in the corner that would know three chords and taught me those chords. And there was just like big cases of vinyl everywhere, you know, Bruce Springsteen, uh, Elton John. And I'd just put those big 80s headphones on that were oh, the size of my like face that. and yeah. just and just sing my ass off to everything that I could find. Um, and that's and that's how it began. I think just my parents had uh, set an open container for me to sort of be myself and sort of sing it out, you know, and dance it out and not make me feel weird for, for doing that or shutting me up. Um, so that that's where it all started. So from the womb, I'm sure they were playing me some jams, you know. But I came out singing, for sure. <laughs> um, and it was always something I, I, I needed to do. I always had to sing. I always was, were attracted to, was attracted to beats. I've, I've always been tapping my knee, like my, my foot, as a, as a, to a rhythm that I'm, that I'm hearing. I still do it all the time. Um, and so it's gotten to a point now where I w- I've gone through like the rock and roll thing, which is really entertainment focus so there's a there's a i didn't realize there was so there's there's entertainment for, for music but it's always medicine like there's a there's a medicinal quality to to music and i didn't really understand that until recently with the yoga journey that i've been on with like more meditative type music and and really reflecting on how different music makes you feel because it, it's a, it's amazing how how music can just change your track like, like you literally change your program in a second you could be just like in despair and then boom you put on like a happy song and it's like wow that just changed pulled me out of it yeah music How saved my life that? that's for sure yeah. when i was a teenager yeah isn't that, ama- isn't that yeah. amazing you know mm. so um and so rock and roll and and all that um for me it was a double-edged sword because i would i would play in bars and clubs and and things and it would it would set me down this like party path of back to drugs alcohol um and all that <laughs> and then and then when I when I changed tracks into the, the yoga world, I realized that there's a whole thing, there's a whole industry of music out there that's not um, on the radio, really, you know. And and that's and and there's a lot of like healing type music, which is so powerful and and uh, and ancient. And it's sort of how we got here by by singing ourselves and beating our own drum. And so I realized um, the entertainment sort of industry. Um, yeah, by by marketing and selling music in a certain way has really separated the musicians from the masses of people and, and they've kind of take and disempowered the people by sort of um reiterating that we're not musicians ourselves therefore we've you know because only a hundred years ago you couldn't um um you had to sing your own song or play beat your own drum to be able to hear music there wasn't speakers in spotify and it was all yeah. organic, so we've lost that 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 um, that med- medicinal quality of doing it ourselves and vibrating our own bodies, you know. And so, like, we go we go to a U two concert and like Bono and the Edge and the boys that they're, they're getting all this healing, and they're, they're nailing it, and we love we love them. But the crowd is like the crowd is kind of disempowered, I believe, you know, from experiencing the fullness of what music can be and how it can heal you so i i'm really passionate now about getting people singing themselves you and might change your mind if you hear me sing ah, i changed my Jacko. passion <laughs> i'm passionate about getting everyone singing because it's not about how you sound that's oh. that's the thing it's just not okay. it's about just resonating your body how and whatever comes out is perfect oh, whatever comes out is perfect because it's not about it's not about entertainment it's not about the audience judging that and it's about you and your um, coming back to self, healing, vibrating, harm- harmonizing with nature. You were just nature making a sound. But yeah, like the, the judgment around that, the, the, the bigger sister that says, oh, you sound like a Drive dead away. cat type thing or whatever. And, <laughs> um, and, and whoever has like told us these kinds of things over our life, we've listened yeah. Yeah. and then shut our mouth. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then when we shut our mouth, our singing voice, we shut our words off. We start, we start not speaking our truth and because it's all, it's, it's all an energetic center from, you know, the heart, the heart's directly connected to the tongue and the mouth. And, and then, and then, so if we, if we, if we're working on, 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 um, vibrating our truth, then more truth will come out. You and know, you probably and, sound better if you're actually singing your own. 
feelings your own, your own tune own rather tune. than somebody else's. Yeah, everyone's got their own tune. So your own vibrations will well, I'd probably sound a lot better. Very much have my own shit. tune. Yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> well, I was the kid, even as a child, I was the child that would sing <laughs> and hear, would you shut up? You know, I had oh, that, I had that. Please stop singing. But it was like, it was noise to other people. Because it is, me singing is noise. I've heard know. you sing and I'm sorry I do a grave. <laughs> it is. It's, it's, it's terrible. Like, it's not. I love you so not, much. I know, I it's know. not my talent in life. Sing in silence. But you know what? Yet, yeah, maybe yet. You know, yet. <laughs> you just put yet on all of that. All of those. All of those. Are you offering? Are you offering? Yeah. Yeah, and we're going we're gonna to definitely sing. Go and sing. See today. what you're saying. I'm going to sing today. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we are definitely no. going to sing today. So, so it's like it's not about other people's judgments. It's about resonating that part of yourself. And and um, what I've found, and I must have known this from just a little boy, um, singing makes me feel good. And it's sort of it's it's like I'm, I'm less angry, I'm less uh, anxious, less depressed, because like, I'm 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 lighting my body up by vibrating my body. Can that be like singing along to music, like out loud? Because kind of Moni and I do da- in the house dance parties and car parties, yeah. and she likes the music fucking loud, which is great because so white. Like, she's like louder, mummy, mm. and we both yell and sing, which would sound shit if anybody hears us <laughs> at a set of traffic lights or walks up to the house. Yeah. Well, we're locked away; no one can see, and we're blackout tints. So it's like, who are those people? Can't you know? They can't sing in that car. Um, <laughs> but we do. You know, you've been over, and we have like massive oh, jams. Yeah, yeah. The kids jump around, and we just sing and dance in the lounge, which we love so much. And we do that all the time. Money will go. Mum, eh? yeah. time to black out and have a dance party. So she closes all the curtains, oh. she yeah. turns it on, yeah. and then it's just like, what do you want to listen to? Yeah. And she likes like because I love. 80s and 90s yeah. and the old school whether it was rock because I'm yeah. getting into rock music at the moment so I'm like what do you want rock or pop you know and then it's like the old school house music like fuck you just can't get house music like that you know no. anymore that yeah. shit no. was the bomb was the yeah. I day. still listen to it yeah. oh, I lock myself listen to. in my bedroom yeah and I'm dancing. I just love it. My kids yeah. actually like it as well. But you also don't want to put your, your own children off. So so my girls as well, They um, I think they fancy themselves as songwriters because they're oh. constantly, between them, making up new songs. And they'll mm. come to me and be like, Mummy, can, I'm going to do a performance. I've, I've so made cool. up a new song. And, you know, and they'll sing the song, which is, you know, a four- and five-year-old maid. And you're like, wow, it's oh amazing. God, and that. you just want to encourage and encourage because the last <laughs> thing I want to do is take their voice from them mm. and make them self-conscious about anything. And, you know, I want to, like, encourage them as much. I mean, for myself, I'm Adele in the shower. I am just, like, <laughs> like out there. But I I found myself when I'm, like, even with headphones in and I'm on my own, I've almost <laughs> trained myself to silent sing. <laughs> And I'm like, yeah. got these headphones in, in the kitchen by myself, and no oh, one's in the house. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, I could belt it out right now. No one's around, but it's almost like my I don't. No, no, no. Robert comes yeah. in, muzzle. Oh, I've done it before. I, I've been sat in bed before, and um, Robert's been on night out. But because I've got his sound uh, out earphones in, I'll be like uh, <laughs> in bed, and he's come home, and I'm in the bed just going, <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like. Okay, what have I come home to? Oh, fucking words, you know. So it's like, so who, yeah, who, who, where does that story come from, right? Where does that story come from to just get quieter and quieter and quieter? Yeah, yeah. You know, and and it's like, I'm I'm about the opposite of that. Like, I I know how healing it is and how amazing it is to feel um, after a big singing session or dancing or, you know, all these modalities. So I just want to share that. And get the world get the world singing again, and, and, and be the opposite of of American Idol, where we judge it, you know, because yeah. it's not about entertainment. It's way deeper than that. the The Chinese symbol for medicine and and the Chinese symbol for music is almost identical. Like these people know our ancient our ancient ones know how um, how how similar in um, medicine and music is. Well, the same the same thing. It's a huge medicine. Vibration. We're all vibration. We're all energy. Mm. Um, we are rhythm, you know, our heart beats without us even thinking about it, our unique heartbeat, you know. We just need to harmonise with what's going on. I'm definitely a dancer. Whenever I hear music, it's just like I've always done dance throughout my life. Dance is very important to me. It's how I express myself. Mm, It's how I... It's, yeah, so when I put good music on, and I just have to move, and that is my mm. sort of... How's it go again? <laughs> <laughs> 
something like that. <laughs> Sorry. So you I was just going to take the piss that. out of you. I was just going to take the piss out of you. That was fucking brilliant. Dance, hey. Dance. Dance, dance, dance. I don't have very dance. sort of... Yeah. Yeah. You don't have very uh, noticeable talents. Yeah. <laughs> you do. You have plenty of talents, darling. We yeah. love you. We love you with yeah. your fabulous singing. Can we hear a song? Yeah, I was just going to yeah, say Yeah, let's, let's do that. Yeah, okay. hear a song. Let, yeah, let's share a song. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Pass me a oh my gosh, time. I'm so excited. We happen to have one already to the right. Here's what we prepared <laughs> earlier. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. Do you want to tell us about what you're going to do or how, what yeah. you're going to sing? Um, yeah. Do, do, do I need to move? Yeah, here we go. There What's we go coming through um, is to to offer a song called Ipure, which which is a song um, that I wrote in Māori um, Sanskrit from India and English. So, yeah, it just sort of has the all the colors of the rainbow of language. Um, it has mantra, but it's also like a song song as well. Um, and it's just a sacred song about how we, um, it's a little prayer to how we're all walking each other home, you know. Oh, fuck you, beautiful. I love yeah. you, Franco. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, um, leaving the whole, the whole sort of entertainment of music for me, I just as as I was coming, as a, what was coming through when I was singing that was the the openness to other languages as well. Yeah. You know, um, you don't really listen to too much rock and roll that's in an, in like Maori or Indian or you know other different languages, and just being like singing, um, singing and with 
with ancient lyrics like this, like Sanskrit lyrics. So Sanskrit is, an, is a language that was our first, uh, the, the an most ancient language we found that was first written thousands of years ago. That takes you out of your mind, your mind, and into kind of like a feeling state. Yeah. Because well, you, you did don't. that. You did that all right. Wow. Wow, that was um, your voice as well. Is, is it's very powerful. Like very I think. Healing. Thank you. Is you, wow. you, as soon as you went into that, mm. you just hit us. <laughs> we just hit us somewhere because we're all three of us all of a sudden just wowed. Uh, yeah, that wow. was really beautiful. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you guys. Thank you for yeah allowing me to share. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I need to listen to some more of you. You're such mm. a. It was just like wow. Your voice is incredible, mm. Franco. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, I, I love I love being the, the the igniter for other people to sing too. So what I what I do week to week is um, a, a kirtan workshop, which is like an ancient san, tends to be ancient Sanskrit Indian, um, but I, I throw in Maori mantra that I'm working on as well. So I can I sing a I sing a mantra a line of mantra out, and the whole crowd sings that mantra back to me. So it doesn't take any memory you don't have to be super talented to be able to do this workshop so because i line it up for you you can just hit it off the tee so i sing it i sing a line of a mantra like um ganesha sharinam sharinam ganesha and the whole crowd sings that back ganesha sharinam sharinam ganesha and there's just something so, so powerful about community just like bringing, bringing their voices together. And because there's so many people, no one person stands out, you know, um, so no one person's judged. It just, it just feels great to lean into and, and just connect and, and be a part of community. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's, that's how a lot of religion became so um, sought after and so big because of the actual music that was playing the music that you could connect to and sing and and because it gives you that that euphoric feeling you know that yeah. godly yep. type yep. Like yep. Yep. feeling that euphoric <laughs> feeling just keep playing just keep <laughs> playing yeah. <laughs> so yeah let's yeah let's keep let's keep 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 the music flowing so how did you get into so did you where did you go to learn because I know you went to India yeah. And yes. as you said, you played for four million yeah. people. Wow, that's mm. What the yeah. fuck? The and how? <laughs> how? What was that for? Was that? Did you do some of your training over there? Is that what you went home yeah, to yeah. India for? Yeah. So that was my um, second or third time to India. I went. I went over to India initially to do my yoga teacher sort of training and mm. step into that world, not to become a teacher, but just to I just to, for myself to to go deep into the practices and. And and in the authenticity of the country it comes from, um, and then I came back here and started sharing kirtan, which I was just explained um, to you. And then uh, uh, the this community called the Art of Living, who are an Indian-based community, but they have like little arms around the world in different cities. They invited me to to go to India with them to represent like Maori, New Zealand, and wow. um, this Indian music that I'm that I'm loving. And at the World Culture Festival over there in Delhi. Holy cow! Oh my god, that would have been yeah. mind blowing. Four million people oh rocked up. You on a stage? How did that feel? It was it was what me and uh, and the the Art of Living New Zealand team. It was like it was like the Olympics for like meditation and yoga. It was like that kind of vibe. All the countries coming together. Um, other countries were, were represented by like thousands of people. We had a team of, of about 30. So it was really like, you know, New, humble what New Zealand. An achievement. What we had our little shirts. And, well, actually, I, I, yeah, I think I was just, yeah, not in a shirt at all. Um, but, <laughs> um, but everyone else did. And, and, and I sung a waiata. I sung uh, the song called Wairua, which I wrote with a friend of mine, Ricky Hardaweta. Mm -hmm. It's a um, beautiful song. Yeah, yeah. And, and, um, and got like four million like Indians singing how did that us. feel for you? Doing it was that? unbelievable. It was unbelievable. It was so it was so big yeah. that that I wasn't ended up not even being nervous because it was just too big to even understand. Mm -hmm. So there's just a mic like normal and a guitar, and I just stood up there and just delivered the best the best I could. And um, but to be to see that many people is is bonkers. Like you can't you can't, can't stage, imagine that. Like, the stage uh -huh. the stage that I was standing on um, holds the Guinness Book of Records for the biggest stage ever created. Um, it could hold sixty thousand people on, on, on the stage. So, 
so it, they, they had tiers of musicians, like like ten thousand tabla players and ten thousand flute players, and and you know that oh was just the God. stage. So four million people were out there stage breaking all kinds of records. Was it a one off thing that they do, or is it something that they it, do? They try and do it. I think every three or four years. Yes. Um, They've done, I think, three, but then that was about four or five years ago, and there should have been another one already, but COVID's, yeah, and bless India at the moment, like, they're going through it. Yeah, they're going through it. So it's definitely not going to happen for a while. Um, Shit. But it was, it was bonk, it was bonkers. Like, they had all the, the PA, the sound systems, they had, you know how there's only, like, one just by the stage, you know, left and right? There was, like, every 100 metres, there was another sound system and another wow. sound system and another sound system. It was just so cool. What a credible ex- experience, like, yeah. to, to go and be part of What an honour as well. Such an honour. Like, to be part of that. And to represent your country. Do you have the link? Yeah, yeah I've got the YouTube oh my link. God. I was going to say, was it televised? Yeah. Could we watch yeah. it? Yeah. Well, that's the other thing. It was, it was literally yeah. televised across India at the same time. So there was, like, a billion, tele- like, TV audience as mm-hmm. well. It was really, really, really something cool. Um, but yeah, and, and, like for me, India uh, is there's a natural feeling to when I when you arrive there. There's a there's community. There's everyone. The families stick together. Um, you you learn from your elders. Like there's a there's a real community vibe there. They've got they've got their their struggles as well, but they're kind of the opposite struggles of what we have in New Zealand. They seem to be quite clean um, on the inside. Like they're constantly meditating. They um, there's there's huge states that um, that are that are vegetarian. Like there, there's like states that 50 million people strong that don't even eat meat. You know, like wow. and, and you, it's meats are illegal. And oh my lord! Wow. Yeah, by law. Yeah, and so I know there's this emphasis on on health and Ayurveda, like our kind of ho water holistic term. Um, so I come back to New Zealand after being in India, and I feel like the culture shock is coming back here to this kind of sort of non, non-speaking of truth and sort mm-hmm. of suppression of how we're truly feeling. It's just, they, they put it all out there. It's just like smiles, pain, death, birth, like nothing's hidden. Mm-hmm. And there's quite something quite relieving about, about it. That's why I love India so much. Mm-hmm. So you're quite drawn now, obviously. Yeah, drawn I, love, now, yeah. I, love, I love India, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fuck, yeah, wow, right. amazing. What part Great of your lesson. journey did sort of the because um, you've always been into music? That's been a passion from like say even the womb. You've come out, you know, and you're you're a musician in in your heart. When you sort of got into the event side of things, when did all that start happening on this journey? Like when did you go? Okay, I need to take my mm. new teachings and yeah. you know share the love. When did that come about? So, this is a good question to follow on from the Vipassana thing because I because. I came out of Vipassana at just learning right then, going in the deep end of 10 days meditating, never meditated before, literally the day before on, on the vodkas, you know, and wow. so um, yeah, just my normal life was before and then everything changed. And so meditation came and actually Vipassana is, is all vegan food too. And my body just felt so amazing being on that diet that I haven't eaten meat. I haven't, I've been vegan vegetarian since, since, like 10 years ago just from that experience because I was like oh my body loves this yeah it feels clear and clean and 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 um I get really present you know on this diet so I just continued that but then I came out of that experience going knowing myself going I'm never going to keep this up by myself yeah. <laughs> like I can't be responsible for myself <laughs> um you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, for like a week max, you know. Yeah, let's have some more. There. Let's have some more M names. Um, <laughs> and then, so I was like, I need to bring in the troops. I need to, I need to do a call out. So Facebook, I think, yeah, Facebook was was happening, and I and I, I put a status saying, Hey guys, I've just like learned how to meditate, like a little couple of yoga stretches here and there. Let's do. If anyone's keen, come do like a Wednesday night free like workshop at my yeah. house. I, I came along. Yeah. I came along with my I went yeah. with my kids. Yeah, yeah a couple of times. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And the first Wednesday night was packed. I, I and I didn't know anyone who I thought meditated, yeah. did yoga or anything. Yeah. So um, boom, the community came. You know, and because everyone was in their own version of desperation. You know, of like something something needs to change. And so we had people like up the stairs, like just like in, on every step, like trying to, you know, sit in cross leg position. Just, it was amazing. And, and then those, um, the, the more 
that happened, the more I, I went down my education of meditation and teacher uh, teacher training, yoga teacher training, and then music took me to India. And then I came back and ran retreats. So the groups got a little bit bigger and then moved forward a couple of years and then big festivals. And that's 4,000 people it, it, it strong, came, baby. Yeah. Look yeah. at you. It, yeah. just came, it just came from from those little gatherings. That, that's amazing. In the lounge. Yeah. Mm. Those were actually really fun too. Mm. That was great. Mm, so good. Everyone yeah. would just bring a, bring a meal. Yeah. And then you would share the meal afterwards. And, and obviously it had to be vegan, vegan, so cool. vegan yeah. vegetarian. Ew. Probably just There's no meat, no meat, no, no, no meat, yeah. no mm. dairy. Mm. Mm. No, but there was yummy food though. Oh, I mm. love, yeah. absolutely love. Because there's been a couple of yoga places I've been to over the years that have the um, to experiment, eh? have the vegan food or the, is it the Hare Krishna food. Oh yeah, well, One Love. Have you have you guys been seen the One Love trailer? Just, oh, just amazing so good. food. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, you've, I mean, food's a big one for people. Eh? Like people get really personal about like their food and their diet and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But eat, not eating meat just works for me. And yeah. um and you know like uh, milk and stuff like yeah, dairy and stuff yeah. doesn't, doesn't do great yeah, things for me either. I always notice I don't feel better after dairy. We had yeah. that conversation. Yeah, about and I was that too, telling yeah. you, Sarah, this yeah. morning I don't do milk dairy. No, I don't do like dairy. It's very seldom I have cheese. Oh, but a big I don't day. Day. See, I, and I know it doesn't work. Like you know, I've seen in the past about when I stopped it for a while and then I went on autopilot and I drank milk and I hadn't for like a week or I can't even remember how long it was. And as soon as I drank, I was like, uh-oh, I was meant to do that. But I felt so sick. Yeah. But is that what, how my body's always shit. feeling? Well, I just don't think milk's for human consumption It's the anyway. fucking cow, for yeah. God's sake. That, that's, that's my addiction, human. though, milk. Baby cow. Yeah, milk yeah, and cookies. Nice. My yeah. addiction. Mm. What, what's cool about the festivals is that all our food trucks, amazing food trucks, are, are all ve- mostly mostly mm. vegan. Um, if they're not vegan, there's a, like maybe someone's doing... Um, vegetarian but somewhere, but beautiful yum. food. The food. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's flavors, isn't it? It's learning all oh, the fa- flavors. So cool. Because I try to go vegetarian. To I'm too. I am too lazy, and lazy. it is a lazy. It's and complete be, laziness because be I don't enjoy cooking. I don't enjoy anything to do with fucking cooking. I hate the kitchen. You can just piss off. Mm. No, I just go away kitchen. Mm. You know, I, I just spend the least amount of time there. So whatever I do, it's just gonna be quick. Mm. But I would love to eat differently because. Meat is not good for me mm. at all, but I'm allergic to so many foods. I just, you know, I must starve myself. Mm. Um, but you know, yeah, when it, when I eat beautiful food like and the flavors and everything, I'm like, God, I wish I could do it or sustain it. Mm. You know, but it does take quite a bit of time, preparation, and knowing it's just knowing your stuff. Though, isn't it? Yeah, just I, I find it's easier. Work. Of course. Yeah, it's like it's like um, people, people that, overthink girl. it a bit. It's like um, you know, any curry that you would normally eat, you just make the same curry without meat. Like, <laughs> it's actually easier. It's <laughs> I've never made a curry. <laughs> what, <laughs> like, can we come then? have dinner at your place? Yeah, let's have dinner. We should do a cooking show. Like, yeah. you know, oh. just bring it in. Yes. That'd be cool. Yes. I know some, ama- yeah, some amazing chefs. That oh, could so the next time, Franco, in cool. my kitchen. Yeah. You are so going to cook delicious. us a feed. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm in. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> that's dumb. Stop it! I'm getting hungry. You're gonna hear my tummy rumble again soon. <laughs> just like what what we put inside of us, eh? Like become it really becomes us, you know? Like what, um, you know, what you listen to, what you watch, what you eat, yeah. it sort of goes in. So I've been just focusing a lot lately on you know what I put in. What about your children? Do they sort of follow your footsteps with that? Because I think it's another M&M. Yeah, the M&Ms. Yeah, hide it. Because kids obviously have you know that maybe pressures from other kids or they go to school and the lunch boxes look different and mm. um or are we just becoming more accepting of differences in foods like do your kids sort of go to parties and be like well i want to eat that and that person's eating that or do they just follow suit with what you're i never i never create rules around around food for my daughters yeah um i i definitely i definitely explain everything and like I feel really good for eating this and, and whatnot and sometimes I, d- I don't want to buy like I just don't, don't feel like buying meat for even my daughter so I'm like this is going to be like you can have everything that is just not meat today and, and but she can do she can really just do what she wants most of the yeah, time sure. it's just yeah and, then that, yeah and I believe in people learning for themselves yeah. trials and tribulations like to know is to feel like to feel is to know you have your own experience to it's their journey to try and figure it out, eh? Yeah. Yeah, same yeah. with my kids. I don't, like, I try and eliminate things like that. I, you know, I know are really harmful. Mm. But we hardly, well, my kids hardly ever have meat. 
but they yeah. will they will also choose fruit over lollies and things like that. But I, I will not tell them they can't have certain things because yeah. I want them to figure figure it yeah. out for themselves. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I, I encourage them not to um, have too much of certain things. That's it. Yeah, that's all yeah. I can do really. You know. Mm. Mm. Yeah, controlling doesn't work ever yeah. in life. Like, I mean, you, you know, say no, me, they're going to do it anyway. You and I are trying to fucking you know? control us, and then we're going to do the exact <laughs> thing you don't want us to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I see you. Shocking! I'm yeah. terrible. Yeah, it's our trigger. Ever since I've been young, and you know, and everyone that I've, you know, even my partners and that that I've been with, no, don't try to control me. You know, you try for like a itty bitty time. That's gonna backfire in your face. Then you learn quickly. Because so I'm gonna wear. I'd retaliate badly, and it's a, it's a. Instant, instant yeah. thing. You tell me what you're doing. It's a, mm. Mm. no, no. So your kids don't like it either. Oh, I'm on right. Oh God, no. yeah. Oh, she can't be told what to do. I've got to really manipulate how I say things to get her to do what I want. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But you know, she's too headstrong. Options and just education, consequences, yeah, explaining yeah. things like, hey, if you do this, then this could happen. If you do this, this could happen. Yeah. Um, that is that's empowering. You know. No one likes a dictator, eh? Dictate. <laughs> God, I. Yeah. Fuck no. Um, <laughs> besides from festivals, I did see that you actually posted something today, um, and I actually reshared it on my story because I thought it was brilliant. Um, you know, instead of just waiting for that once a year opportunity to go and experience, you know, the, the four days, mm. um, you do lots of different things, you know, throughout the year and your retreats and stuff like that. But you've also um, got something going on at the moment every two weeks a night yeah. out. So yeah. night out. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Tell this is us quite about cool. That? This is cool for like people like you and I that like where I get to a Friday, Saturday night. It's yeah. like I should be going out, but everything on offer is just that you know the next fiftieth, fortieth, like you know, <laughs> like, like like stag do whatever. Yeah. Um, so we we've got this amazing church that hasn't been used as a church for about five years in Oldaki, um, and my friends have managed to um, sort of got get the lease on it and. They've called it the Holistic Hub. So we're just running events in this church. It's really beautiful. We can hold like 200 people in it. It's got a nice like squishy carpet and it's just really, really cool space. Squishy carpet. I love squishy carpet. Yeah, yeah just you can dance on it really. It feels good. It's not like cold and, and, and hard. Um, and so every two weeks on a Friday night, but this week, the next one's going to be Saturday, but mostly Friday nights, we're, we're holding Kirtan, so the mantra workshop that I was telling you about. Yeah. Um, cacao ceremonies so as we eat chocolate cacao is like the basis of mm -hmm. of chocolate and once again um, you know chocolate's been abused like cacao's been abused into this kind of sweetened state when cacao the the, the seed of it is it was used as medicinal spiritual you know um, heart opening um, um, herbs so uh, we do like a cacao ceremony oh, and then into into some breath work you might have heard of like Wim Hof yeah um yeah so some some deep breathing we're not breathing deep enough as no, human beings don't. and yeah. therefore we're kind of sleepy we're not very awake mm -hmm. um you know breath work's amazing so we go through some breath work and then into this particular week is going to be African drumming and dancing. Oh my god! So gosh. that's the big like finale. Is this finale. on Friday? This guy oh, is kid friendly. This, this is, Saturday. This is, yeah, it's kid friendly. Um, not this Saturday, but next yeah. Saturday. Next Saturday. No, come, god. everyone, come. Kids. Yeah, kids? yeah. Oh, Tickets for all of you. Yeah. Um, it's going to be six till ten, so it's like a four-hour yeah, fun thing. Up yeah, <laughs> bring bring the kids if you want. I'll bring Monish or whatever. So we end up. My two, yeah. So the, the night just sort of just ramps up and ramps up into this um, organic, like um, probably 10, 10 African drummers and just like tribal wow. dancing. Oh, wow. oh, we are hundred yeah. no, percent no going. No judgment. Everyone just like just yeah. dances for for health. Yeah. You know, and just to light yourself up. So it's Let's on the weekend because you know there's we need to fill those gaps yeah. on the weekend. Well, there's no options. excuses for us not to have anywhere yeah. to go now. Okay. So yeah. where can people, um, so the people watching this that have um, gone, okay, they, these are really cool yeah. things, where can they find out all this stuff that's going on? So if someone's mm. going, okay, mm. who's um, Franco and where do we find what he's up to? Where yeah. are these events happening? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just NZ Spirit um, on Facebook or Instagram, just NZ space Spirit. Um, and francoheki.com is my personal one, but everything's all intertwined and mm. social media seems to be the best way for mm. you know to find to find well. everything mm. um the, the festivals have their own websites as well but you can just jump on them from the social media platforms 
Yeah. That's going to be fun next Saturday. Yeah, I'm going to hold you guys to it. Oh, oh, oh please do. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, yeah. Can't wait, actually. No, you bought something else? Yeah. Well, I think um, I think that would be beautiful to... So are you, can you can you do a sign okay. off with that om nom noms? Yeah, I'll do a the sign off. Om noms. Om nom noms. Nom 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 nom. Yeah, so. <laughs> so what's the more technical <laughs> word for the nom noms? The nom noms. Yes, yeah, So this is um this is a sound a sound bowl oh my that God, I'm so I about. bought back from India on my first journey to India, and I played about 40, 50 of them to to find like the one that resonated with it's me. It's quite heavy, this one. It's really heavy, it's so it's full, it. full solid steel. Oh my God, so beautiful. Um, I don't know what it's sans it's Sanskrit, but I'm not sure what it says. Because mm. there's like different it ones that you get, aren't they? Because I was looking at yep. ordering some, but they different say notes. there's different. Yeah, I needed to do my research as to where to get yeah. the right ones. And different yeah. sizes too, aren't they? Different sizes um, t tends to be the different size creates a different a different note, and it and it vibrates a different part of your being. Um, yeah, this is an A and like a heart chakra. Opener, a heart oh, opener. Oh dear. So, um, <laughs> oh dear. I, I love the heart. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> and, an, and an eye duct tear opener. Um, so yeah, so they, they come in, they come in all, all the notes, all the sizes, and this is the one that just resonated with me. So I put this on top of my backpack and brought it back, brought it back from India, and this is the little guy um, that uh, that makes it all makes it all happen. I'll oh, give you an God. example. levels you so um this uh these sound bowls can can be played just by themselves with no, with no vocals and it's, it's a beautiful healing experience but i use it to um as, as like a base underneath um the vocal om which yeah. is an ancient sanskrit mantra um basically it means uh you yeah, the sound of the universe a universal yes you know it's like this the big the big oneness sound that humans can can harmonize with um, so it's basically broken down to four to three um, three sounds. It's ah, or mm. Can we all do that together? Ah, ah or, or mm. Mm. Yeah, we just we just keep the the, the lips closed for the end, and just you can sort of feel the, the vibration change when you resonate just with the with the lips closed. So once again, inhale. Ah, ah or. or feel that different vibration from each syllable so that makes up om so um what we should what we should do i invite you guys is to <laughs> yes close your eyes mm -hmm. and we're going to do what i call a continuous om so we're going to breathe when you need to breathe um, and just join in with me um, with om when you feel it and just notice how it makes you feel and just remember no one's watching <laughs> And just feel the vibration of this beautiful bowl. I'm going to join you. And this is just a safe space to express your tone. Anything com that comes out is perfect. Inhale.
with with no. a long time. Mm. How about how like oh, right now? Relaxed. I just feel very relaxed. Mm. Yeah. Everything's lighter in the room. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you got such a powerful voice. I love it. it. Yeah. It can just bring you right into presence. You know, nothing. The power of mantra. Um, that re- that repetitive same thing, especially if it's a re- good repetitive thing with vibrational tone, uh, it gets you out of the mind and into this moment, which is the only place that life exists is this moment. The past is gone, the future's not here yet, and we, it brings you into now. And when you when you're present to now, that you see the magic, which is life and everything around us. So. You made that really easy for us to be in the now. You know, like to, yeah. you drew us in so so well. Music. That, yeah. And that, that's why that's why music's so popular yeah. is because mm. it is the one of the easiest ways to jump into the present moment, mm. and it's fun, you know. Thanks for that. That was really nice. Really yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I feel good awesome. too. Franco, wow. there's something I definitely want to um, actually just say to you, and it's just to really give thanks to you, and not just for being mm. here today, but um, f- for your achievements and what you're setting out to do. Um, just my own experience um, at your festival was um, it was very pivotal for me like um, and, I, and the way it touched me was so huge and so needed and to think that you're doing that for so many people over so many different platforms on all the different things that you're doing um, you know one of the things that you said to us on a phone call was you know I just I, I want to help people and you really are achieving that and that's really beautiful and I just really want to sort of honour you and thank you for for doing what you're doing because it is special and it does touch mm. people so mm. thank, thank you. you for that wow oh, oh, so great it feels feel so much love I know yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so much love, love in the room <laughs> yeah it's beautiful it's just really 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 beautiful just to go through this little journey together with you guys and I feel different than I did when I first came in the door here today and in, 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 a, in a great way. Um, so it's the right thing to be doing, you know, undeniable. Thank you. And thank you for what you guys are doing, allowing this platform for people to come and be real because we need yeah. more of it. Mm. Well, should we sign, do you want to sign off with our own or can we have a little, maybe a little jam and we, as we sign off? Yeah. Would you like to do a sign off for us? Yeah. What would you like to do? Great. Yeah, is that all cool? Yeah. Have a little two to lose with the little jam jam. A little toodaloo with a little jam jam. Can you play that song that you, you said before that you wrote for yourself? Uh, when oh, you played? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Would you play that? Yeah. Which one? Oh, oh, yeah. 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 That's beautiful. And um, we're going to say bye, guys. Love you all. to be here. Yeah.